start congratulating Eduardo. It doesn't work. So maybe I can change it here. OK, so uh, I will talk about the condo effect. And the first time I studied it, it was uh, when doing the many body course of Eduardo. This was back in 1998 at Unicamp. I think Eduardo, it was the first time he was giving this, this course. Uh, he had just got there. Uh, at that time, I was doing my master on semiconductors. And then there appeared this paper uh, over here where they saw the condo effect in, in the context of semiconductors, right? Uh, by the end of the semester, we had to present, to choose a topic and present, give a presentation. I, I think we didn't have these six hours exams that Rafael told us about yesterday. Maybe because it was, a, a, it was not a mandatory course, that's why we didn't have it, so, but we had to present this. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. So, uh, uh, so I, I decided to talk about the condo effect because of this paper, because I was doing my master on semiconductors. So uh, in this paper, they, they, they created a two-dimensional electron gas by building a quantum well, and an heterostructural semiconductor. Then they applied the gate voltage, and that's how they, they managed to confine the electrons in the three uh, directions. And if there was an unpaired electron at the dot, then of course it could uh, form a singlet state with the conduction electrons through the condo effect. And this uh, results in, in, in a resonance close to, to the Fermi energy, which gives rise to a large dense of states and thus a large uh, conductance. So the results are here, the conductance as a function of the gate voltage. Uh, there is this energy uh, gamma, which is the coupling between the electrons at the dot and the electrons in, in the leads, in the conduction bath. So if the coupling is large, then there is this uh, large conductance and large peak as a function of the gate voltage. If this coupling is small, the condo effect is destroyed. So here they were observing the condo effect. Here it was destroyed because the coupling is small, uh, the conductance is small, and, and uh, a thin peak uh, as a function of the gate voltage. It was one, okay, now it is working, but it went on the wrong direction. Uh, more or less one year uh, after that, I decided to do my PhD with Eduardo, and the condo effect was again important in the works I did during my PhD because I was using dynamical mean field theory. So you probably recognize this uh, famous picture of the mod transition. It, it's the uh, DMFT solution for the Hubbard model. This is the dense of states as a function of energy for different values of the interaction U. And for intermediate values of U, we have the, this three peak structure. And indeed, this peak around the Fermi energy is related to the condo effect. Because when we do DMFT, we map the lattice problem onto a single impurity problem, which is one of the ways to describe uh, the condo effect. So after working with the condo effect for many years uh, in the static situation, I proposed to a former student of mine, Elena, that we studied uh, the formation of the condo effect as a function of time. And that's what I'm talking to you today. Sorry, I'm all the time in the direction here. So here's the outline that I will follow. I will define a quantum quant and show uh, only one experimental motivation for our work. Then I will discuss the dynamics after connecting an impurity to interacting chains. I will show you results that the magnetization at the impurity side decays faster if we increase the interaction in the chains. And more recently, we got an analytical expression for the condo time, valid when u is small, which says that uh, u favors the formation of the condo cloud. That is, if we turn on u, the uh, condo effect forms faster in accordance with uh, uh, these results for the magnetization. Okay, so first, what a condo quaint is. So we prepare the system in a given uh, eigenstate of a, an initial Hamiltonian. 
Then we change some parameters of the Hamiltonian to get a final one, and the le we let the system evolve in time according to this final Hamiltonian. Uh, this is uh, an example. It's indeed realized in optical lattices experiments. So first, they prepare the system in such a way that this barrier here is very high. So the system is in a mod state. We have one particle per uh, site or per quantum well. Then suddenly, they decrease this barrier and then observe what happens as a function of time. Okay? I'm not showing results about this uh, paper here, because here it's simulating a one-band system. And in our case, we want to have two particles. So I'm showing you uh, results just to motivate our theoretical work of this more recent paper, where they build quasi uh, one-dimensional systems. These are represented here in the horizontal. So there is a little coupling between each chain. In gray, we have the shallow potential for mobile atoms. And in, in red, we have lattice wells for localized atoms. So the localized ones are represented by E over here. They apply a very high magnetic field in such a way that they choose, in this initial state, they choose the particles to be only one type of spins. In this case, it spins down. Then, th then they do a quench by changing by decreasing very much the magnetic field and also changing a bit the potentials that they use to, to create these quasi uh, one-dimensional systems. Uh, these are the results that they got for the population uh, of localized states. E here represents localized states. Uh, as I said, in the beginning, the magnetic field was very high, so uh, the population was mainly given by uh, down spins. And as a f but as a f when they decreased the magnetic field, uh, they observed that this population of down spins decreases with time, while the population of up spins increase with time. Uh, they interpret this as a spin, a spin flip process between localized magnetic moments, which are given in yellow here in this cartoon, and the localized particles, which are given in uh, blue over here. So there's a spin flip which justified these uh, results that they got. So uh, they managed to realize in optical lattices uh, experimentally uh, the interaction between localized magnetic moments and the localized states, which are interesting in the context of our work. So uh, in our work, we study the uh, quantum dynamics of the condo effect. We have uh, two papers on this. In the first one, we look at the spin relaxation, and in the second one, we look at the transport across the impurity. I will, of course, show the main results of these two papers to you. Uh, this work started when Elena was uh, doing her PhD with me. She got numerical results for this problem. We didn't understand very well these results, especially the dependency with the interaction. And there came uh, Mo Allison, who is here. Uh, and he did some analytical calculations under the supervision of Rodrigo. Okay, so this is the system that we considered. Uh, we have uh, uh, an impurity here, which is initially is not coupled to, to the chains over here, right? So we choose the initial state in such a way that we have a single occupants and the spin is pointing up. Uh, and then we have, we may have one or two chains, right? And these are interacting chains. So it is important that we have interaction U uh, between electrons in the chains. So uh, since, it, since we want to do a quaint, in the initial state they are not coupled, but at t equal to zero we cup, couple them by turning on this t prime one and t prime two. As I said, we do uh, numerical calculations using a time-independent density matrix normalization group. And to help understand our results, we, uh, we described the chains by uh, Luttinger liquid theory and use bosonization to solve it. Uh, what our main goal was to study the formation of the condo effect. Because, of course, when there was not coupling between the impurity and the chains, there was not the condo effect. And we want to study how it 
uh, forms as a function of time. And especially, you, usually the cone defect uh, is discussed when there's no interaction uh, in the chains, in the con conduction path. But we want to, is we want to study the, the, the role played by this interaction in the chains. Here is the model that uh, we solved. So uh, there's a, a term coming from the, the, the chains, from the leads. There's a, a term com coming from the impurity. And then there's the hybridization between them. Uh, as I said, since we want to, to, to study the role played by you here, uh, we use the Hubbard model to describe the chains. So uh, the electrons can hop from one side to the other with probability t. And uh, we pay an energy U when we have double occupants uh, in the chains. And we choose, uh, we are not at half filling, because at half filling this would be an uh, insulating state. So we are at quarter filling, because we need a metallic state over here to uh, study the condo effect. For the chain, we have epsilon d if there is only one uh, electron at the impurity site. And we pay an energy UD if we have a double occupants at the impurity site. And for the hybridization, then it's this uh, T prime one and T prime two. Uh, and there's a connection only with the first sites uh, at each chain. Here are results for the occupation as a function of time for two different values of UD. UD is the interaction at the impurity site. So UD equal to 2 and UD equal to 7. And in each plot, we have uh, results for different values of U. U increases from the black curve to the magenta one. Uh, these are results from the literature for the equilibrium case. Since we are doing a local quaint, then we expected that the occupations as a function of time uh, goes towards the equilibrium values. So if you compare carefully, you will get to this conclusion that the occupation at the impurity approaches the equilibrium values. And also, if we uh, observe over here that the deviations from single occupants decreases if we increase U or UD. So since we want single occupants to uh, study the condo effect, we will keep U and UD large uh, in the next slides. Now we have results for the magnetization as a function of time for two values of U, the interaction in the chains, and different values of UD in each plot. If we fix UD, say we look at the yellow curves, uh, first of all, we see that for all the curves, the magnetization decreases as a function of time. So we start with the magnetization equal to one half, because we have a single uh, electron at the impurity site, and then in all cases, it decreases as a function of time, which makes sense because we want to analyze the condo effect. Now, if we fix UD, say we look at the yellow curves, uh, we see that it decays faster if we increase U. If instead we fix U and we compare different values of UD, we see that it decays faster if we decrease UD. So these were the results that we didn't understand very, very well, this dependency with U and UD, and that's why we uh, went to uh, do an analytical approach to try to understand better these uh, results. And I forgot to say this is only uh, for a single wire, not two wires. Okay, in the analytical case, uh, what we did, we went to the condo regime, that is, uh, we went to the case where this uh, hybridization here is much smaller than minus epsilon d and ud in such a way that we go to, to, to the condo Hamiltonian, right? So we have an effective Hamiltonian, which uh, it still has the terms coming from the leads, and for the hybridization, it is given by the condo Hamiltonian, that is uh, an s dot s uh, term where one S comes from the impurity and the other, and not the other one comes from an effective spin involving the first uh, sites, the, the electrons in the first sites of each wire. Uh, since we have interacting chains here, we described it by, then by the Luttinger model, and we did bosonization to, to solve this, this model. And again, 
Also, the, the condo term had to be uh, written in a bosonized form. Then we did perturbation theory in the condo coupling that we call uh, lambda here, which is proportional to this JK, which is the coupling between uh, the two electro, the, the two spins. Since we want to compare our results with the numerical ones for the magnetization, so we have to calculate the magnetization as a function of time uh, analytically. Uh, before showing our results, I want to, to stress that uh, our analytical results are valid in this range of time. So since we are using the Luttinger liquid to describe the chains, uh, this is valid for uh, low energy, so that we have a cutoff in energy which corresponds to this capital lambda over here. In terms of uh, time, this means that the time has to be larger than the inverse of the cutoff in energy. We are doing perturbation theory, and we know that the perturbation theory will break down at a certain time. So uh, from the static problem, we know that there is a, a characteristic condo temperature where the, 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 the condo effect sets in, right? And so if we take the inverse of this condo temperature, we can uh, define a condo time, which is represented here by this tau uh, k. So when the time becomes of the order of tau k, that's when the perturbation theory breaks down. So uh, our analysis is valid for tau much, much smaller than tau k. So tau has to be larger than the inverse of the cutoff in energy and uh, much smaller than uh, tau k. Here are the results for the magnetization. It's the change in the magnetization. This is for only a single wire. These result, results over here I've already showed to you. Those are the ones that we want to understand better. Uh, now we are looking at the, 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 the change in the magnetization. So uh, at, at time equal to zero, the magnetization was one half. So we were calculating one half minus the magnetization sh shown here. Uh, and also, since this is our the prediction coming from the analytical calculation, right? It says that the change in the magnetization goes with 1 over UD squared. UD is the interaction at the impurity side. And uh, ln of tau. So we plotted the change in the magnetization as a function of 1 over UD squared ln of tau. And uh, since we observe straight lines, this means that our analytical calculation, our analytical prediction is in agreement with our uh, numerical calculations. But if you, we compare the two cases, these are uh, on the top we have u equal to 4, on the bottom we have u equal to 8. These are the in, u is the interaction in the chains. And for the two cases, we see that the slopes are different, right? So there should be some dependency with the interaction u that should be uh, hidden here in this A parameter, which depends on this cutoff lambda. So this cutoff, we cannot describe this dependency with u, but this cutoff uh, should be depending on uh, u. This was for a single wire. Uh, for two wires, uh, this is the, the, the difference in the magnetization. Now, there's a term that is similar to, to the one for a single wire, that uh, it goes with 1 over ud squared times the ln of tau. But now, there is an explicitly dependence with uh, the interaction through this uh, Kc. Kc is the Luttinger parameter that takes the information about u, right? So it appears in this uh, power law term over here for the difference in the magnetization. Uh, here are the results for the change in the magnetization as a function of time, again for two values of u, different values of ud. Uh, in colors we have the numerical uh, results from uh, DMRD, and uh, the straight lines are the fittings, and we can see uh, there is a good agreement, but indeed, since we have a limited uh, region range of time in, in our numerical calculation results, we cannot distinguish between a situation where only this term would uh, be relevant and a situation where both of them are playing a role. So uh, this is not conclusive that we are really uh, capturing, 
some dependence with uh, KC and thus with the interaction in the chains. This was in the first paper. Uh, in the second paper, we went beyond. Uh, in the first paper, we were always uh, doing perturbation theory to second order in the condo coupling, where we got these results that I already discussed with you. In the second paper, we went beyond, we, we went beyond this, so we also have the term that depends on the condo coupling. Lambda k here is the condo coupling to the power of 3. So, and then we have this new term uh, appearing uh, here. So, we could ask uh, how the magnetization at the impurity site is changing as a function of time. And this is because there is a spin current uh, towards the chains, right? So, we can uh, write down a continuity equation. So, the time derivative of, of this magnetization that we were calculating here or obtaining uh, using DMRD. So the time derivative of this magnetization is related to the appearance, appearance of a spin current in the chains. This spin uh, current can be calculated as, uh, I mean, the operator is the time derivative of the total spin uh, in the chains. Uh, we can either calculate this expectation value by doing perturbation theory in uh, this operator here, or by using this result for the magnetization in the con continu continuity equation. In both cases, we get this expression for the uh, spin current. Uh, it depends on the ratio of uh, the condo time and the time itself, so it's a scaling function of this uh, ratio. It's interesting to note that in the case of the spin current, uh, it is a scaling function although the magnetization is not a scaling function of this ratio because we have this lambda here, capital lambda here, which depends on the interaction. Uh, now I will show the main results that we got in the second work, which is for the charge current. Again, the, the system is the same uh, as before. We have an impurity which initially is not coupled with the chains, but then we turn on this T prime and we couple the impurity to the chains and we want to, to observe how it evolves in time. To calculate the charge current, we need to add to the Hamiltonian this term here, where mu is a chemical potential and N is the occupation in each of the chains. And the chemical potential is different in each chain in such a way that the difference between them plays a, a role of a gate voltage. And this, the charge current is, the, uh, is given by this equation over here, is the derivative in time of the difference between the occupations in the two chains. As before, uh, we did perturbation theory in the condo coupling, but now if we do it up to the second order in this uh, coupling, we recover uh, the result, no, from the literature, uh, of the current through a non-magnetic impurity. Which means that indeed, if we go to second order in the condo coupling, we are not describing the condo effect yet. So we need to go beyond it. That's why indeed for the spin current, I already showed you results where we go to the third uh, order in the condo coupling. Uh, here are the results we got. First, for u equal to zero, u is the interaction in the chains. Okay, for uh, short values of time, this is the expression that we got. Uh, it depends on the ratio between the condo time and, and the time. Uh, if we move, uh, so this was, we got this result by doing perturbation theory up to the third order in the condo coupling. If we go to the limit, to the opposite limit of very large values of time, then we know that we go to the uh, strong coupling fixed point. Uh, where in this case of u equal to zero, uh, the impurity forms a singlet state with one electron and decouples from the wire and a single wire is left behind. So uh, when time goes to infinity, we expect that the current, the charge current, goes to the ideal uh, current with, which is this J0 in our equations. We can perturb this fixed point, and then we get this dependency with time that is here in this expression. Uh, 
Uh, we cannot calculate what happens at intermediate values of time because the perturbation theory breaks down. But since the condo effect is not a phase transition, the formation of the, the condo effect is not a phase transition, it's a crossover, we expect a sm smooth function connecting these two results. When we turn on uh, the interactions, the expressions become uh, more complicated. They are given uh, by these ex expressions over here. Now we have the dependency with KC, where KC is uh, the Luttinger parameter that depends on the interaction U. Okay, so this is for uh, U, uh, finite U. So when U is equal to zero, we can write our uh, equations for the, the charge current as a function of this ratio, but in the case of U, finite U, this is not possible. Uh, to get an estimate for the, 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 the condo time, we can look when the uh, perturbation theory breaks down. For u equal to zero, this is the expression for the condo time. So when the perturbation theory breaks down, we have the condo time, right? Uh, this is the expression when u equal is equal to zero. If you take one over the temperature, this corresponds to time, then you should recognize uh, the expression for the condo temperature uh, for u equal to zero. And uh, this is the, the result that we get for the condo time if we turn on u. This is indeed only in a limit, only when u is small, right? So the, this case is given by this uh, expression over here. And what is important here is that when we turn on u, the condo time decreases. That is, u favors the formation of the condo effect as we saw in our uh, numerical calculations. So to summarize these results for the charge current, I think it's better to look in a plot, right? So this is uh, the charge current as a function of time. For u equal to zero, this is the behavior. It's, it, it goes to the ideal uh, current uh, when time is very large. You can uh, recognize, again, the susceptibility. If you do this change, one of tem temperature goes to, to time, the known result for the susceptibility. And if we turn on u, then uh, the current decreases as a function of time. And we got this uh, prediction for the, the, the condo time, which I think it's non-trivial. Uh, I'm not aware of a result across an equivalent result to this one for the static problem. So I think it, it, it's uh, uh, an important result that we got this condo time as a function of u if u is small. If you want to know more details about this work, especially the second one, Mo Allison will be presenting it uh, tomorrow uh, in the poster session. Since I'm already doing an advertisement here, uh, today he will be presenting another work on uh, the uh, chart order in cuprate superconductors. I think I'm running out of time, right? So just to conclude, sorry about that. Uh, in the first work, uh, we look at the magnetization as a function of time, the dependency on it uh, with the interaction U in the chains and with the interaction UD at the impure site. I think the most important result here is when we fix UD, say we look at the yellow curves, uh, the magnetization decays faster if we increase U. And this is related to this expression that we got in the second work, uh, that the condo time uh, decreases as we increase U. So sorry for, for the time. Thank you for your attention. Thanks a lot, Carola. Uh, before questions, uh, announcement. Um, after this talk, we take a group picture here. And then we go to sing Happy Birthday to Eduard upstairs where there is a cake. Thanks for the cake. Uh, so, Carol, uh, I think I have two questions. First, uh, uh, maybe you mentioned it and I didn't catch it. Uh, the fact that the current goes to zero with interactions, uh, it's a little bit unexpected, yes. but this reminds me of the Kane and Fisher uh, results that uh, impurities are, you know, uh, in an interacting uh, wire either cut it off or heal the impurity. Is yeah, that, it's is that related to this on? one. I, I, I think I saw Manal saying that I was 
uh, had short time and I, no, no, sorry, it was my fault. I didn't discuss this limit. I think it's related to it, right? If u equal to zero, then uh, the impurity forms a singlet with one electron and one wire is left behind. But uh, when u is finite, then uh, two wires are left behind, which means that uh, j has to go to zero uh, at infinite time. And this is the strong coupling fixed point result. Yeah, but wh why does it cut it off? Is it obvious? Maybe it's obvious and I'm not seeing. It, 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 there is this result, old result by Kane and Fisher, that yeah, if you I put an impurity, it cut, cuts off the wire yes, if it's yes. in repulsive interaction. Is it the same physics? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. This uh, we know from the static problem, yes. Okay, thanks. Uh, and uh, and then if we perturb this fixed point, then we get this dependence with tau over here. But we know that for infinite time, it should cut, it should cut here. And that's why it goes to zero. OK. Yeah. I think that's the correct exponent. OK. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 KC the KC here the it depends on you. So uh, this expression depends on right, you. Right. Right. And the, um, the, the, the fact that when you had one wire in, in the magnetization case, it didn't depend on KC. And then it, we, with two wires, you, it depended on KC. Yeah, I, yeah. Can you understand? Because that? it only depends on this case. It only depends on on, on the spin sector. There is uh, ah. a spin charge separation. So in this case, it does not depend on on KC. It depends only on KS. And when we have two wires, uh, then it depends on KC. Because it, it depends. Leaks. There's the no charge leaks from wire yes, to the other. Yes, yes. Okay. From from the the. The impurity and and okay. uh, makes sense. Thank you. The chains. Questions. Uh, the decay of the magnetization coral seems to be uh, exponential in one case and power law in the other. Did you draw this in uh, some log scale to see the? Yeah, in, in, you mean in this case here, there is this power law? Yeah, in the other yeah, one but the problem is like that we, in this work, we were trying, uh, we were looking at the DMRG results, and we didn't have enough time. We should go to larger values of time to try to see this. Okay, okay? This, this power law coming. We, we, we played, uh, yes, Elena played a, a lot with these this plots to try to do these fittings, right? We have. Uh, we had to get values for A, B, C here, so she was playing with this. And but but the the problems here, we, we should go to larger values of of time. Uh, this she got uh, these results when she was a PhD student, so it was like five years ago. So maybe with the same code we could go uh, to larger values of time now, or we can study the condo effect uh, coming from a, a spin Hamiltonian since the beginning. Then uh, there would be less states, right? Because here, since we have the Hubbard chain, there are four states per side. If we uh, study a uh, spin Hamiltonian, it would be two, uh, two states per side. So numerically, it would be easier. So it may be one of the things that we will be doing in the fu future if we have the chance that is students to do <laughs> this, this work. Thank you. Okay, since we are running out of time, let's thank Carol again and take the group picture. So, what was your graph? Don't know if you should like to squeeze and I suppose you take a picture.